Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for tuning in wherever you are to this special edition KNTU podcast. My name is Ryan Baldwin coming to you from the KNTU Green Studio, and I am joined by a very special guest, Mr. Joseph Kuypers of the Texas Cellos. Morning, Joseph. How are you doing today? Good morning. Doing great. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining me, and we are here to spotlight a very special organization in Texas called the Texas Cellos. Can you give me a little bit more insight as to what the Texas Cellos are? Yeah, the Texas Cellos is a cello choir made up of students and professionals that I started during the pandemic. It was born of really a true need. I barely needed to recruit because people genuinely wanted to make music together in person. And it's kind of just grown into a really special meeting of cellists playing together. So most instruments, if you were to have a group of instruments play together, might might be too much of one thing. But the cello has this very broad range that many people say is similar to the human voice. So you've got the low C string, which kind of sounds like a bass. You've got the high range, which would sound like a soprano. So, you know, you get a group of cellists together, you get some of them playing high, some playing low, and it's all cello, but it really makes an orchestra. Um, and it's got yet this this warmth and human quality. When you say a group of cellists, what is the experience level of these? Are they, Do you bring up and teach anyone or do they have kind of a set skill set that they come in beforehand or are you all about everybody's coming in and playing together and learning together no matter what your skill level so i'll start by saying all of us were beginners at one point so i was a beginner yo-yo ma was a beginner very often in music classical music there's kind of this pyramid hierarchy system right where everyone wants to get to the top who's the best um and that kind of misses the point at the same time we want a very high level of playing right so we have a couple groups our top group is really very serious students and professionals. We call that cello sound. And then the general cello choir, we do believe in like the the side-by-side -side learning. So we will have, and it's mostly serious students, right? So someone who really cares. So middle schoolers play alongside high school who play alongside college who play alongside professionals. And this making music together, I think, creates a really special atmosphere. So sometimes a professional gets so used to playing that it becomes a little bit mundane and run-of-the-mill and you get a really enthusiastic high schooler who like gets to play with the principal cellist of Fort Worth and they just like the energy from the high schoolers just this is the greatest moment of their life and of course you know the professional feels that and then they start to play different too because there is something intangible so yeah I think it's a really special thing to do that and also just the energy that occurs in this sort of ecosystem of creation. Absolutely there's something to be said for people from all skill levels playing together yeah. and being able to experience that, like you said, just from, from top to bottom, even if you do have the column, maybe a first chair yes, um, that play together, just having everybody being able to perform together as well as something else. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about yourself. You, I know you said you started this during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. What was the thought process that said, I need, I need to start this, not like I want, but like this needs to be something that is available for cellists in Texas. So the pandemic happened. All of my teaching, so I normally teach around 30 hours a week private lessons, that went to Zoom. And rehearsals and concerts and traveling, you know, pre-pandemic, I was probably playing 80 to 100 concerts a year. So there's a lot of moving around social activity. All of a sudden, everything stops and everything's happening via a screen. For my students, I'll say that the biggest challenge for an, a, a lot of my students are high schoolers. The biggest challenge is kind of maintaining or getting them basically to look up and be enthusiastic. And a lot of them, it's cool not to care attitude. And that's death because that's the opposite of the truth, right? It's cool to care. It's cool to bring energy and attention. So the pandemic made this about a hundred times worse, right? Everybody just sort of like receded into themselves and stopped reaching out and that became like a virtue. And, you know, there was reasons for that. But it, there was a conversation with a, a boy I've taught since he was probably seven or eight. And he just graduated high school. Um, we'll go off to Carnegie Mellon. But I think I at, was trying to make conversation with him, right? He's a senior or he would have been a junior in high school at the time. And I've known him for a long time. And he was just like totally eyes down, closed off. Like, so how are you? Hmm. How's school? Hmm. How's, how's homework? Hmm online good grades yeah what about orchestra oh yeah yeah we have it so what do you do and this is literally our conversation well what do you do well i sign into a zoom call and then what well we play through the orchestra music 
What do you mean? But we mute ourselves, and we're all in a Zoom call, and we, we sit in our, and I just play, we all play together. It's like, but you can't hear the others. Or how do you hear the others? Well, it's on my computer. Do you use headphones? No. So you're using computer speakers, and like the child's loud, right? So can you hear anybody? No. Where do you do this? I sit on the side of my bed. And like the thought process in my mind is like, I love cello. And if I had to play through orchestra music alone in my bedroom, sitting on the side of my bed to a computer laptop, I would quit. I would not continue because that's not music making, right? There's no group enthusiasm. So I, I just was like, this is not good. This is, this is going to be the death of like half of my students and their love of music. So I, I said, okay, we're going to start a cello choir. We're going to do it socially distanced with masks. Anybody who's not comfortable with it, you know, don't sign up. Within, I think, a week or two, I had as many applications and, like, people who played it, uh, who joined as they could, right? So I think 30 kids. That, that was our first year. And so we shortly after that, we started a nonprofit, got a board, you know, put it together, found a place to rehearse, got some great music. And, I mean, that was an incredible year because it was, like, a true joy to be able to, like, make music together. And, like, just the... The palpable enthusiasm was was remarkable. Then, of course, we needed a place to play. I had been planning for a couple of years to do a festival at the Cotton Mill in McKinney. And I had dates, and I had the place booked, and, like, everything had just gone on pause. And when I looked, like, at the date, I was like, we need a concert. And then Governor Abbott opened up everything literally two weeks before this. It, no, like, the timing was incredible. Perfect. And I had this huge industrial space where we could be socially distanced, and like spread out, sitting not near each other, right? And which is, so it's not a concert hall. It, it couldn't have been like more perfect timing. And so we did a full on music festival in a cotton mill and we sold that concert out no problem. Since then, we've just, we've continued. And so that's the, that's the cello choir. Then that's how we started the festival. And going along with that, coming out of the pandemic, so much of what we do is educational and the side by side learning and then wanting to bring in other cellists and other students started Texas Cello School, and this is also run by Texas Cellos. But at the moment, it's a one-week institute we did last year, phenomenal, and culminating with two concerts on the last day. We'll do the same thing again this year, and we're hoping that within a couple of years, it'll be like a full-on, you know, like stay-away retreat for a couple of weeks that, you know, the cellists from around the world will come to. Is this the only show that y'all do over the course of a year, do you just do the institute and then the two shows, or do you try and do? I know it's fairly recent after the pandemic oh, no. opening. So up. this year, what did we do? We did some incredible ones. We went down to a cave without a name in Bernie, Texas. Sold out 215. They, I think they oversold that concert. So. <laughs> no, but like it was packed. Right. Brought a cello choir into a cave 300 feet below the earth and played in the throne room. It was incredible. Then played up in Frisco at their, for a fundraiser for Frisco Arts. We played Christmas carols at, what's the big mall downtown? North Park? Yep, North Park. Then we did a project with the TCU Cello Ensemble, and we packed the new Van Cliburn Hall and Moody Performance Hall. So, I mean, we had just nonstop performances all year. It was it's kind of insane. And I, <laughs> I, as I look forward to planning next year, it's like, how can I top playing in a right. cave? <laughs> and like playing in Van Cliburn Hall within two weeks of it opening. I mean, these are like, it's incredible. And it, one thing leads to the other. And, but yeah, so now I've got to get creative again. I have an, an amazing idea. And I have a friend who, you know, does some oil and gas. And we're going to try to get an oil pipeline, one of those large ones. And we're going to try to play into one end of it and record it on the far end. <laughs> the create. That, that that has to be a that has to be a cellist thing the creativity that y'all come up with something like that to yeah come up with and we need oil a video of this and we need oh, a Texas Longhorn there oh it, <laughs> and then you throw it on YouTube it goes go. viral and then the next thing you know you're national that's, there we go that's there how that go. works that's right so you mentioned the institute that is coming up this year first through the sixth of August yes culminating in which I guess is now going to be your annual music at Mill Festival yes this year we have. 30 cellos play Radiohead, Metallica, and movie themes. Mm -hmm. What was the thought process behind Radiohead and Metallica? Do you guys have a theme for the music at Mill every year, or is it just kind of fly by the seat of your pants and say, you know what, this year we're going to do this as you get closer? Yeah, so basically I think I don't always believe in genres. 
I mean, I do, I understand there are musical languages, but I think Metallica had more in common with Beethoven than separates them. I think they're very expressive and rebellious and raw and Radiohead as well. And they really have, they have something they want to say and they are very, very good at saying it. They have this really profound voice. And I mean, some of their albums were doing a couple from OK Computer. That album feels like a symphony because it's put together with such, such thought. So what can I say? I think it's not a denial of, of genres, but it's a little bit genre bending. Sure. Right. And we've got a lot of younger kids. So, you know, we'll put Beethoven's Seventh Symphony, the slow movement, which is gorgeous. And then Nimrod by Elgar. And then we'll jump into the Unforgiven by Metallica and then some Radiohead. And I think also for the kids and for the audience, it, it makes it very like, wow, this is great. And I ne didn't know I could hear it this way. I, th I, th I think you're on point with something there or, or you're on the right track, because definitely I think especially with younger kids, I think there is a bit of a die off in classical music for younger generations and being able to hear songs that they know mm -hmm. now Radiohead and Metallica you could argue that the younger kids maybe aren't as familiar with that either but I so last year we did a number of Beatles tunes and I got some incredible arrangement um really really gorgeous from the Beatles one album and the funniest part was about half of my high school kids were like I don't know this music. <laughs> they're like it's really beautiful when I listened right. to the cello version and I was like do you know the original song no nope. and I'm standing there and his dad is you know the dads are 45 50 and the other's <laughs> the kids these days. I think the one that you'll get everybody with this year, at least according to this post that I'm looking at, I'm seeing Master of Puppets mm -hmm. um, from Metallica, and surely by now, with the last episode of Stranger Things going on Netflix, surely everybody knows Master of Puppets at this point. So yeah, we hope so. I think I think that you that might be your biggest draw. If, and if you don't come hear us, and you will soon. Per, yeah, absolutely. So the first concert's five thirty on August 6th. Second concert is going to be 8 on August 6th. So both concerts on August 6th. Come check out the Texas cellos. Would you mind playing for me a little bit? Just a little sample so the listeners can hear. You know, it's not, it's not going to be the same as 30 cellos, but we get to at least hear what one cello can do in the studio. Sure, happy to. Thank you. 
Wow, that was that was fantastic. Thank you for playing for me. And I can see while watching, I could see the passion in your eyes. This is something that, you know, anybody listening needs to go watch this because you can tell that the people that are going to be playing truly care about the cello and playing this music and you can feel the music flowing through them. I could just see that just, you know, I played a little bit of a couple different instruments myself and I can tell when somebody feels that passion and is wants to put it into their instrument. So thank you for, for playing for me. That was, that was brilliant. That's my pleasure. That is Joseph Kuypers of the Texas cellos. Again, August 1st through August 6th, the Institute followed up by two concerts at the mill at East McKinney in McKinney, Texas on August 6th, 5 30 PM and 8 PM. Thank you so much for listening. Everybody have a wonderful day. <laughs>